Okay, moving on. D. R is sitting in the normal position again and rotating at 7.50 radians per second. When a friend drops a textbook gently onto her lap, the book falls vertically, then stays on Ira's lap as she spins. Explain how the arrival of the book will affect the angular speed of Ira and the chair. So this one is... There's a couple of ways of looking at it. Um, one is part of the energy from the rotational um, rotating Ira and chair will be used to bring the book up to speed so some of the energy will be transferred to the book which means overall to cause it to rotate so overall the velocity the kinetic energy because it's rotating it's angular kinetic energy will be um, less which will decrease the speed of Ira in the chair um, and increase the speed of the book so they're all at the same speed so that's one way to look at it um, and I guess the cause of that is friction so when the book comes down and it hits the really badly drawn person on a chair. The book hits here and makes contact. It's actually a chair like that, isn't it? Because they're spinning. <laughs> um, you can't spin on a chair with those legs. But anyway, um, it makes contact. There'll be friction between the two. In a typical system, you get a bit of energy loss, heat, because there'll be sliding friction. And then um, once it, uh, that, that sliding friction um, overcame... Uh, What's a better way to look at it? The, it would still gradually, because there's a sliding friction, or a dynamic friction they call it sometimes, it would accelerate the book up to speed because there's a clear force applied to the book, if you consider the book by itself. Um, and once it increases the speed, it'll eventually um, be too slow for it to slip and it'll become static friction, and then it will be moving at the same speed as the person. Whew. Okay. Um, what they're really interested to hear, they're always interested to hear about external forces and torques. So, um, external force and external torque. And I wish a stylus would write better on an iPad than, than this, but anyway. And there are none. There are no external forces and torques acting on the whole system of the book and chair that is spinning and I. Um, it's all internal, so the energy is conserved, and that's why you would say that, um, or momentum is conserved, energy is conserved. Um, all of that um, combined momentum has to be uh, the same, so the total momentum of just iron in the chair has to leach off some of that to the book to bring it up to speed, so the book now has momentum. The other way you can look at it is you're increasing mass um, of, the whole sys of, of these two, um, of the spinning system, so for the same angular momentum um, you are um, increasing the mass so you have to decrease the angular uh, velocity. Okay, I think we've covered it more than enough. Anyway, moving on. Um, e. Ara holds the book out its arm's length while, while she's spinning at a steady angular speed of 5 radians per second. She quickly moves the book close to her body, assuming the book is effectively a point mass. It's moved from 0.600 meters to 0 0.050 meters from the center of rotation. Rotation and inertia of the book can be calculated using the equation I equals mR squared. Explain how the angular velocity of the rotating system increases. Okay, so uh, again with a closed system with no, no external forces and torques acting. So angular, uh, um, angular momentum is, in, is conserved and no external forces and torques um, <coughs> and L equals I omega so I being the mass distribution um, inertia kind of thing um, v omega being the angular velocity so if the angular, if the rotational inertia decreases when you're pulling it closer, the angular velocity has to increase to keep L the same because there are no external forces and torques being applied. That's pretty much the whole of what we're getting at with that question. Um, <clears throat> uh, part two, there's going to be a calculation here. I'm almost sure. Um, so I'm just going to try and remember 0 0.600 meters, 0 0.050 meters from the center, and I equals m r squared. The book has a mass of uh, 1.20 kilograms. Um, estimate 
our 2.10 estimate the angular speed of the system when the book is moved close to Iris body and explain why in practice the angular speed could be larger than this. Okay, so uh, starts off I think at an angular speed of 5 radians per second. So we go from um, 5.00 radians per second to some speed but it's increased. Um, and we've gone from where are we? From 6.00 it doesn't seem right, 0 0.60 meters to 0 0.050 meters. This is the distance of spacing. Remember the inertia of the book um, equals m r squared. I'll just double check all of my copying of those down there. m r squared. Okay, and we're estimating the angular speed of the system when the book has moved closer to Ira's body. Right, there's a bit more information we need because um, what we're going to have to look at is the initial, uh, the, the total um, uh, in inertia, um, initial, we'll call it I, which is going to be the inertia of the chair and IRA, let's call it inertia of chair, plus the inertia of the book. Um, and then we've got the final, inertia final total is going to be the inertia of the chair again, which doesn't change, plus the new, and this is the initial book, uh, and so this will be the inertia of the book final. Okay, so um, we're going to, I'm, I'm again, I'm not going to do this in great detail, um, just for the factor of time, we use this. Uh, formula for this value of uh, the inertia initial um, to make it go into there. I think this was 5.45, I better just go up and check uh, all the way to the top 5.45 kilogram meters squared all the way back down there we go so um, just to put the numbers in there 5.45 kilogram meters squared um, the inertia of so so that's going to add to to this. Um, I, oh, I was meant to be trying to stick with the red for that colour, and then green for the next colour. Then we've got 5.45 plus this, which is going to be taking this number into this equation to get a new number, and that's going to show us the the change in inertia. If we look at the ratio of the change in inertia. Um, to, so from our angular uh, momentum, um, that has to stay the same, and our inertia times our omega, our inertia in this case is uh, decreasing, uh, that's staying the same, but our omega has to increase to keep L the same. So if we're going to put this in a formula um, way of doing this, we would, um, we would go uh, what are we actually <laughs> trying to find out? We're trying to find omega, isn't it? We're explaining why the... Oh, estimate the speed of the system when it's moved closer. So first part, um, estimating the speed. Uh, omega is going to be L over I. Um, so um, the change in omega will be by the same proportion that um, L over I changes. So we, do we know L? I don't know. It doesn't even matter, actually. Um, but if we uh, if we substitute the first one in, uh, let's get going. If we substitute this first value in um, for i, we're going to find omega goes drops by uh, a factor of five. Yep, because it's higher. No, that's the same. That equals five. Okay, but you, you can see what we're doing anyway. We're going for a ratio of of the two. Um, you can calculate this. For, um, you don't actually have L, but you can just leave it as L. You can work out what omega should be as a proportion of I um, for the first value and for the second value. Anyway, okay, sorry, I should have done that better. In practice, the angular speed could be larger than this. Explain why. Um, it's because this is not a perfect system, um, and as um, the person moves, there's a person holding a, a book with their arms, 
and they bring uh, bring it closer for the second part but their arms are going to bend and you're going to have some of the mass of the arms also closer um, so there's more mass, there's a greater mass coming closer to the centre of rotation than just the book that's what that's getting at. Here we go.